Hello students, welcome to Code to Serve Academy. Today we will deal with the practice questions of the chapter Rational and Irrational Numbers, in which we will deal with all the basic questions of the chapter through which we can gain several concepts which are useful for our future. Okay, so let us start the topic. Our first question is prove that cube root of 6 is an irrational number. We have to prove that cube root of 6 is an irrational number. So, we will move like we have done before. For example, we have done in uh, proof that root 2 is an irrational number. First of all, we have taken that root 2 is a rational number. So, let us assume that cube root of 6 is also a rational number. Before that, we have to make it, uh, make it clear that we have to learn two theorems for solving this type of questions. Okay? First theorem is if p is a prime number and p divides a b, what this implies, either P will divide A or P will divide B or P will divide both A and B. For example, if 2 is dividing 6, if 2 divides 6, this implies either 2 will divide 3 or 2 will divide 2 or 2 will divide 2 and 3 both. Okay? So, the concept is like this and the second theorem is if p is a prime number and p divides a to the power n then and n belongs to the set of natural numbers then p will divide a. Okay? So, let us suppose that 2 is a number and it is written that 5 to the power half. Okay? So, 2 divides 5 to the power half. What does it mean? It can it it's, it's, it signifies that two will divide five. Okay, so these two theorems we have to take the reference to make this question understandable. So let us start. First of all, what we are doing, we are making we are assuming it as a rational number. So cube root of six is equal to p upon q. We know that every rational number can be expressed in the form of p by q, where q is not equal to 0, p and q belongs to the set of integer and p and q are co prime. That means p and q will have only one factor that is 1. So, What does this mean? Cube, of, cube root of 6 can be written as 6 to the power 1 upon 3 is equal to p upon q. On cubing both sides, we will get 6 to the power 1 upon 3 to the power 3 is equal to p by q to the whole power 3. Okay? Now, What we will get? 6 to the power 1 upon 3 into 3 will be 1. So, we will get 6 is equal to p cube upon q cube. This can also be written as p cube is equal to 6 q cube. Am I correct? So, let us express this equation as equation 1. Okay? Now, what we are doing? Since we know that 2 is a prime number and 2 can divide 6 q cube, 2 is a prime number, 2 is a prime number and 2 can divide 6 q cube because we can write 6 q cube as 2 into 3 q cube. So, from here we can say that 2 will divide. 6 q cube. This implies 2 will divide p cube. Now, since 2 is a prime number and 2 divides p, cup, p to the power 3, so from the above th uh, theorem, what was the theorem? Let us reconsider it. If p is a prime number and p divides a to the power n, where n is, belongs to the set of natural number, 
what does this implies p will divide a that prime number will divide that number a so here here if 2 is dividing p q this implies 2 will divide p are you getting the fact so we can write p is equal to 2k p can be expressed in the factors of 2 i am writing this equation as 2 now moving to our next part we got p cube is equal to 6 q cube putting p is equal to 2k there putting equation 2 in equation 1 we get what we get putting equation 2 in equation 1 we get what we get we get p cube that is 2k to the power 3 is equal to 6q cube am i correct are you all getting the point in equation 1 it was written p cube is equal to 6q cube on putting p is equal to 2k we are getting 2k to the power 3 is equal to 6q cube so now we can write this as 4k cube is equal to 6q cube is it correct so we can express q cube as q cube is equal to 4 upon 6 k cube we can write q cube as this now q cube is equal to 2 upon 3 k cube okay so what we are getting two k cube is equal to q cube or we can write it as q cube three q cube is equal to two k cube now we are using the same theorem two can divide two k cube is it correct if 2 can divide 2k cube this implies 2 will divide 3q cube since 2k cube is equal to 3q cube this implies this implies 2 will either divide 3 or 2 will either divide q cube or 2 will divide 3 and q cube both from the above theorem so we know that 2 cannot divide 3 and also in this condition 2 cannot divide both so what we are getting it can only be seen that 2 can be maybe we are not knowing that it can divide q cube maybe 2 can divide q cube this condition are not possible that is why we are not taking these conditions but this condition may be possible that is why we are taking this so 2 can divide q cube now what we can write q cube sorry since 2 divides q cube 2 is a prime number and 3 belongs to the set of natural number so from above theorem we can also say that 2 will divide q 2 will divide q this implies q can be written in the form of 2m let us consider it as m for all m belongs to the set of natural numbers so what we are getting we are getting 2 is we are getting 2 is a common factor common factor of 
P and Q. We are getting two is a common factor of P and Q. What does this imply? Let us think of our first thing. We have assumed that cube root of six is a rational number, which was of the form P upon Q. And also, it was said that P and Q are co-prime. That means they have only one common factor, that is one. But we are getting that two is also a common factor of P and Q. So our supposition, which we have thought that this can be done, is incorrect. This is incorrect. So whatever we have thought is incorrect. So it will not be the case. If cube root of 6 is not in the form of p by q, is not a rational number, then what can it be? It can be irrational number. This implies our supposition, whatever we supposed was wrong. This implies we got a contradiction. Contradiction. This implies cube root of 6 cannot be written in the form of p by q or it is not a rational number. This implies, this implies cube root of 6 is an irrational number. Cube root of 6 is an irrational number. Hence, we can prove any number, whether it is cube root of 10, cube root of 8, we can prove that, uh, them as an irrational number through this contradiction method. Are you all got it? It is very important to understand because uh, these type of questions are often asked in your exam. Prove that root 2 is an irrational number, prove that root 5 is an irrational number, prove that root 7 is an irrational number, prove that 2 plus root 3 is an irrational number, prove that 2 root 3 plus 7 is an irrational number, prove that 1 by root 11 is an irrational number, or prove that root 10, root 6, root 8 is an irrational number. These questions are very important. These questions are often asked for 5 numbers. These are very important questions. So, you have to understand it more clearly and more deeply because it will make your marks. Okay. Now, moving towards the next question. The next question is write in descending form these numbers. There are uh, four numbers here. The first one, uh, the first number is 9 upon root 2. The second number is 3 by 2 multiplied with root 5. The third number is 4 root 3 and the fourth number is 3 multiplied with root under 6 upon 5. Okay, We are given 4 numbers. These numbers are actually real numbers. These numbers are actually real numbers. So, what are real numbers? The set, the set which comprises the set of rationals along with the set of irrationals are termed as real numbers. Okay, so what actually the set of real numbers is? It contains the set of rationals and the set of irrationals. Okay, and the set of irrationals. This set is termed as the set of real numbers. Okay, so We have to write it, it in descending form. That means we have to write the greater number in the first section. Then after that, the second greater number. Then after that, the third greater number. Like this, we can continue. Okay. So, first of all, we have to make it clear that what the number is. So, what we can do? Let us take the first number that is 9 upon root 2. How can we make it... Uh, observable. This is not observable. The numbers are written in that manner that it is difficult to understand. So, what we can do? We can factorize. We can rationalize. Sorry. We can rationalize by root 2 on both these sides. What we will get? The first number will be 9 root 2 upon 2. 
also we can write it as root over 81 into 2 whole divided by 2. We can write it as 81 into 2 whole divided by 4. So, we can write it as root over 81 upon 2. Also, we can write it as root over 40.5. So, this number 9 upon root 2 is actually root over 40.5. Also, the number 3 by 2 multiplied by, uh, with root 5 is root over what this number is. This is 3 root 5 whole divided by 2. We can also write it as root over 9 into 5 whole divided by 2. Why I have written it? Root over 9 is 3. Root over 5 is root 5. Root over 2 is root 2. I am sorry, here it will be 4. Okay. So, root over 4 is 2. We are getting this number. That is why we are writing here like this. So, what will be this number? This number will be 45 upon 4 root over 45 upon 4. So, what will be this number? 4 1s are 4, 4 1s are 4, point, 4 2s are 8, 4 5s are 20. So, this number will be that is 3 by 2 root 5 is actually root over 11.25. Now, moving to our next number, our next number is, our next number is 4 root 3. What is our next number? 4 root 3. So, 4 root 3 can be written as 16 multiplied with 3 root over. That means root over 48. Okay. Also, the fourth number that is 3 multiplied with root over 6 upon 5 can be written as root over 9 into 6 whole divided by 5. This implies it can be written as root over 54 upon 5. So, it is actually root over 5 1s are 5, 0, 5 8s are 14. That is root over 10.8. So, we have expressed all the numbers in simpler form. Now, what we will do? So, we are getting the numbers as, the numbers are the numbers are the first number is the first number is root over 40.5 root over 40.5 the second number is root over 11.25 the third number is root over 48 and the fourth number is root over 10.8 so, if we will arrange this number from greater to lower, what we will get? Root over 48 will be our first. Root over 40.5 will be our second. And root over 11.25 will be our third number. And root over 10.8 will be our fourth number. Are you getting it? We are writing in the descending form. Now, what are these numbers actually? What are these numbers actually? What is root 48? Root 48 is actually 4 root 3. What is it? 4 root 3. What is root over 40.5? Root over 40.5 is 9 upon root 2. Root over 40.5 is 9 upon root 2. Also, root over 11.25 is 3 by 2 multiplied with root 5. 3 by 2 multiplied with root 5. Also, root over 10.8 is 3 multiplied with root over 6 upon 5. So, the descending order of these four numbers are like this.
okay so this is the descending form so this question is also important in this type of questions what the question is asked there are a group of numbers and you are asked that which number is greater one which number is lower one we have to write it in ascending form we have to write it in descending form so these questions are also important for conceptual basis okay now moving to our next question the next question is is 3 minus root 7 upon 25 an irrational number we have to write it as true or false this statement is correct or not we have to understand it so let us understand so for an abstract idea we can understand that root 7 is an irrational number through our proof we can uh, prove root 7 as an irrational number through contradiction method we know that we know that root 7 is an irrational number through contradiction method okay now let us suppose assume 3 minus root 7 upon 25 is a rational number let us suppose it as x let x be a rational number let x be a rational number okay so we can write 3 minus x as root 7 upon 25 we can write it this x will come in lhs and this minus 7 upon root 5 will go to rhs so the equation will be like this 3 minus x is equal to root 7 upon 25 now what does it mean if x is a rational number and 3 is a rational number and we are subtracting 2 rational number. Are you all knowing the concept of closer property in rational number? I have made you understand that in closer property under subtraction, if any 2 rational numbers are subtracted, then the result is also a rational number. So, this is a rational number, this is a rational number, this is a rational number on subtracting two rational numbers what we will get we will get again a rational number through closer property okay so we got a new number that is y which is a rational number which is equal to root 7 upon 25 okay now what we can write this y will be multiplied with 25 so 25 will be y will be is equal to root 7. So, this equation will move to this part. So, 25 y will be is equal to root 7. Now, what is 25 y? I have said that on subtracting this two number, we got a rational number. I suppose it at y and y is a, if y is a rational number, also 25 is a rational number and we know that multiplication of two rational numbers is also a rational number multiplication of two rational numbers is also a rational number this implies this will again be a rational number let us suppose let us assume it as z so what we got on multiplying 25 with y through closer property we got another rational number that is z is equal to root 7 so what is that it is a rational number and root 7 is irrational number so, what we got? A rational number is equal to a rational number. Is it possible? Is it possible to do this? No. From any aspect, we cannot say that a rational number is equal to a rational number because that numbers which are not a rational number can be written as irrational number. But no rational number will be irrational number. Okay? So, we are getting a wrong thing. This implies 
our supposition was wrong our supposition was wrong that is what we got we got a contradiction we got a contradiction hence we can say that the number what was the number the number was 3 minus root 7 upon 25 so the number 3 minus root 7 upon 25 is an irrational number is an irrational number okay are you all getting the concept it is very important to understand now our next question is prove that minus 2 upon 7 when multiplied with cube root of 5 is an irrational number we have to write it as true or false so for an abstract basis let us understand it it is very uh, easy to visualize cube root of 5 is an irrational number through contradiction method we can prove that cube root of 5 is an irrational number we can prove it now if this is an irrational number and let us suppose that x is a rational number this whole number is a rational number so what we can say that minus 7 upon 2x will be equal to cube root of 5 but i am saying that if x is equal to minus 2 upon 7 multiplied with cube root of 5 then we can say that minus 7 upon 2x is equal to cube root of 5 we can say it so what we are getting this this is a rational number this is a rational number when two rational numbers are multiplied we again get a rational number so this is a rational number and which is equal to an irrational number is it possible so we got a contradiction hence it will be always an irrational number this number this whole number will be always an irrational number our supposition will be wrong whatever we have supposed that this is a rational number is incorrect so this will always be an irrational number so we will mark it as true are you understanding the fact now moving to our next question our next question is arrange in ascending order what is the meaning of ascending order chote se bade is it correct from lower to higher so these are three numbers we have to make it we have to visualize it like that that all the numbers are in the same form how can we do that cube root square root of 3 can be written as 3 to the power half okay cube root of 5 can be written as 5 to the power One upon three, and fourth root of eight can be written as eight to the power one upon four. Am I correct? Now, what we will do? We will make this denominator part as the common part. So, how can we do that? We will take LCM of two, three, and four. We will take LCM of two, three, and four. what we will get the lcm of 2 and 4 is 4 and the lcm of 4 and 3 is 12 so what we will get we will get 12 as the common part so we will try to make this denominator as 12 so how can we make it by dividing upon 6 both these sides in the numerator and denominator if we multiply by 6 we will get the denominator as 12 so it can be written as 3 to the power 6 to the power 1 upon 12 am i correct this can be written as 3 to the power 6 upon 12 it can also be written as 3 to the power 6 to the power 1 upon 12 is it correct now moving to our next number 
This number is 5 to the power 1 by 3. To make denominator as 12, we can multiply it by 4 on numerator and on denominator. So, what we will get? We will get 5 to the power 4 upon 12. 4 into 1 is 4, 4 into 3 is 12. So, this can be written as 5 to the power 4 to the whole power 1 upon 12. Is it correct? Now, moving to our third number, it is 8 to the power 1 upon 4. We can write it as 8 to the power 3 upon 12. Okay. So, it can be written as 8 to the power 3 to the power 1 upon 2. Okay. Now, what is this number? This number can be written as 3 to the power 6. 3 3 is a 9, 9 3 is a 9 3 is a 27, 27 3 is a 81, 81 3 is a 343, 343 into 3 is 729. What is it? 729 to the power 1 upon 12. So, and also, what is 5 to the power 4? 5 to the power 4 is 25 into 5, 125, 125 into 5 is 625. 625 to the power 1 upon 12. And the third number is 8, is, say 8 into 8 is 64, 64 into 8 is 216 sorry 512 it is 512 so what it will be 512 to the power 1 upon 12 okay so which number is greater which number is smaller and which number is more slow smaller so we have to write it in ascending order so the first number which is very lowest is 512 to the power 1 1 upon 12 that is fourth root of 8 is the smallest number, very smallest number. And after that, the biggest number after this is cube root of 5. And after that, the biggest number after cube root of 5 is root 3. So, we can say this is the ascending form. This is the ascending form. Okay. Are you all getting my point? It is very important to understand. Okay. From examination point, this is not important, but it can be asked. It may be asked as two number question. Okay. Now moving to our next part. Find the greatest and the smallest number among this. So this is your homework. You have to do from your side, which one is greater and which one is smaller. Okay. So you have to do it from your own. If you are unable to do, then I will explain to you, okay? Now, moving to the next question. The next question is, insert two irrational numbers between 8 and 9. 8 and 9 ke beech mein, mujhe do irrational number chahiye. So, sabse pehle, hum log kya karte hai? Irrational number ke ka definition samajhne ka koosis karte hai. What is an irrational number? Whatever we have studied about irrational number should be taken here. Each and every aspect should be remembered. This is the concept. Okay. So, what is an irrational number? The first concept we have studied, the first definition we have studied was the number which is not a rational number is termed as irrational number. Jo number rational number nahi honge, unhe hum irrational number kahenge. Jo number rational number nahi honge, उन्हें हम इरैशनल नंबर कहेंगे। पहला डेफिनेशन ये था। दूसरा डेफिनेशन क्या था? दूसरा डेफिनेशन बोला गया था ऐसा नंबर जो कभी खत्म ना हो, ना ही कभी रिपीट ना हो, वैसे नंबर को हम लोग क्या बोलेंगे? इरैशनल नंबर बोलेंगे। The number which are never ending and non repeating are termed as irrational number. The number which are non recurring and non terminating decimal expansion are termed as Irrational numbers, non terminating and non recurring numbers were termed as irrational numbers. 
I have uh, provided you some examples that if if it is 0 0.01000100001 dot 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 continued up to so on. In this after decimal, what we are getting the values, the digits are not in the repeated format. Every value is unique. They are neither repeating nor ending. Hence, we can say this as an irrational number. This number is an irrational number. Okay. So, we are said to provide two irrational numbers between 8 and 9. So, between two numbers, between two rational numbers, you have to understand a part. We can form infinite number. There are infinite number of irrational numbers between any two rational numbers. There are infinite number of irrational numbers between any two rational number. Also, between any two rational number, there are infinite number of rational numbers. There are infinite number of rational numbers. So, what we can do? Between 8 and 9, we have to find two irrational numbers. So, let us suppose our first number is 8.01001. 0001 dot 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 and continued up to so on. So, this number is neither ending, this is non terminating and non recurring. So, we can write this number as an irrational number which can be written between 8 and 9. Also, if I am writing, if I am writing that the number is, let us suppose that the number is. I am writing the second number, okay? I am writing the second number. The second number is 8.02002002 dot 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 continued up to so on. So, this decimal expansion of the number is also a number between 8 and 9 and is never ending and never repeating. So, we can say this number is, an all, is also an irrational number between 8 and 9. So, through this way, we can find out many irrational numbers between 8 and 9. Okay. So, here the question was that we have to find two irrational numbers. So, I provided you two irrational numbers. If you are wanting infinite number of irrational numbers, you can provide it. Okay. Now, moving to our next question. Our next question is, insert two irrational numbers between root 5 and root 7. Between root 5 and root 7. So, first of all, we know that root 6 is an irrational number. If the question was insert one irrational number between root 5 and root 7, then we can say that root 6 was the number, root 6 is the number which is an irrational number between root 5 and root 7. But the question is, we have to provide two irrational numbers. If the question comes, we have to provide three irrational numbers. What we can do? We can use the concept of irrational numbers as their decimal expansion will be neither terminating nor recurring. So, we will use that concept. We know that root 5, the approx value of root 5 is 2.236 and the approx value of root 7 is 2.646. So, like that, we can also say that we can write between 2 and 3, between 2.236 and 2.646 there comes a number 2.3 and 2.4. So, what we can do? We can write the first number as, the first number can be written as 2.303003000 dot 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 and continued up to so on. So, this number is neither terminating, it is never ending and nor recurring, not repeating. So, this number is an irrational number between root 5 and root 7. Another irrational number may be 2.404004000 continued up to so on. So, this can also be the number. If it was 3, then we can write as 2.313113111 and continued up to so on. This can also be the third number. If we are uh, wanting fourth number, then we can say at 2.414114111 dot 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 continued up to so on. If we are wanting another number, 
सो वी कैन राइट एज टू पॉइंट थ्री टू थ्री डबल टू थ्री ट्रिपल टू एंड कंटिन्यू अप टू सो ऑन सो इन दिस वे वी कैन फॉर्म वी कैन राइट इन्फाइट इ रैशनल नंबर बिटवीन एनी टू रैशनल नंबर और एन इैशनल नंबर ओके बिटवीन एनी टू इैशनल नंबर देर आर इन्फाइट नंबर ऑफ इैशनल नंबर सो आर यू ऑल गेटिंग द कंसेप्ट Now moving to our next question. What is the next question? Find two rational numbers between two root three and root fifteen. We are getting two root three and root fifteen as two numbers, and we have to find two rational numbers between these two irrational numbers. Let us suppose that this is two root three and this is root fifteen. I am supposing it. I am not known that this number is two root three or root fifteen. Which one will be the first number? Which one is smaller and greater? I am not knowing the fact. That is why I am writing two root three as in the first part and root fifteen as in the second part. So let us check: Is it correct or not? Is two root three is less than root fifteen or not? If it is less than root fifteen, then this is correct. If it is greater than root fifteen, then we have to make it opposite. So first of all, we have to check which one is smaller and which one is greater. So what is two root three? Two root three is actually root over four into three. It is actually root over four into three. Two can be written as root four and root three can be written as root three. Root over four into root three can be written as root over four into three. It can be written as root over twelve. So two root three is root twelve. And root fifteen is root fifteen. So which one is smaller? We can say that root twelve is smaller. So our supposition, our assumption that this is the number line is correct. Okay. So this is the number line in which we have to find two rational numbers. Okay. So now what we got? There are two numbers. The first number is root twelve, and the second number is root fifteen. And we have to insert two rational numbers between this. So let us check what is root twelve. What is the approximate value of root twelve? Let us check. Okay. So what is it? Three three is a nine. So it will be three point something. And what is root fifteen? Three three is a nine, so it will also be three point something. So we have to find a value which is between three point something to three point something. So what we have to do? We have to find a number between root twelve and root fifteen. Okay. So what I am going to do? So our first number is twelve point zero zero root over twelve point zero zero, and our second number is root over fifteen point zero zero. These are our two numbers. Between two, these two numbers, and we know that the numbers are like of two, three point something. Okay. So we can what we can write. We can multiply three point one into three point one. What we will get? We will get one six. Nine sixty one. Three point one into three point one will be nine sixty one. Three point two into three point two will be one zero two four. But we have to find a number between root over twelve and root over fifteen. We are getting the values between root over nine and root over ten. Three point three into three point three is what? It is. Three three is a nine 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 eighteen. Three three is a nine one ten. It is also ten point eight nine. So three point four into three point four is what? Sixteen. Twelve twelve uh, twenty four one twenty five and nine two eleven eleven point five six. What is it? Three point four into three point four is eleven point five six. 
so this is uh, it, this is not between 12 and 15 so what we can write 3.5 into 3.5 is Thirty-two. It is twelve twenty-five. That means twelve point two five. So it is a number between root twelve and root fifteen. So we can say that between root twelve and root fifteen there exists a number that is twelve point two five. And also it is a rational number. It is a rational number. Root over twelve point two five is. 3.5. 3.5 is a number whose decimal expansion is terminating. Every terminating decimal expansion is a rational number. So 3.5 is a rational number. Or else we can say that 3.5 is 35 upon 10, which is 7 upon 2. It is a rational number. Okay. So we got a rational number as 3.5. We got a rational number as 3.5. And the next rational number can be, let us check on 3.6, let us check on 3.6. This is very important question to understand. This is very important question because this type of questions will take time to understand. Okay. So what is 3.6 multiplied with 3.6? It will be 6, 6 are 36, 6, 3 is 18, 6, 3 is 18, 18, 18, 36. And 3, 39, 3, 3 is a 9, 3, 12, 1, 2, 9, 6, that is 12.96. So, 12.96 is under root under 12 and root under 15. So, we can write 12.96 is the second rational number because it is equal to 3.6. So, 3.5 and 3.6 are two rational numbers between root 12 and root 15. If we are to find third rational number, let us think that third rational number is possible or not. Let us suppose that 3.7 is multiplied with 3.7. 7 7s seven are 49. 21 plus 21 is 42. 42 plus 4 is 46. We are having carry 4. 3 3 is a 9. 9 4 is 13. So 13.69 will be next number which, can, which will be in between root 12 and root 4. Team. So, if we are said find three rational numbers between 2 root 3 and root 15, we can find it also. So, the next number will be 3.7. Okay. So, through this way, we can do this type of questions. Okay. So, this way is the most understanding questions of this chapter because these questions takes time and better understanding for your future. Okay. So thanks, I am leaving the class.